Alrighty, good evening, everyone. Welcome to week seven of constitutional law. Uh, another big week looking at executive power and, and sort of shifting away from our earlier discussions of legislative power, although uh, as, as we see in, for example, Dignan's case, there's considerable, considerable overlap and we think about um, our tradition of responsible government you know the the distinctions between legislature and the parliament and then the executive government are important but there's also a fair bit of overlap as well um so there'll be plenty to to discuss in that regard but as a as a in parallel to that uh, i'm aware that the the second assessment the blog post is coming up uh, and that it's a it's a form of assessment that is maybe a little bit new maybe a little bit different from types of assessments that you've done in the past so we'll spend a fair bit of time tonight talking through uh, what what you can do how you and your partner can work together to prepare and, and plan your answer and then in terms of actually writing itself um, what uh, what you might like to talk about or, or how you can think about what you might like to talk about. So I'll I'll frame the blog post discussion in the context of executive powers just just to make sure that we're we're getting that nice week seven content. Um, but obviously very, very much applicable to your uh, assessment task as well. So uh, Thinking at the outset, you know that this is a group task. Hopefully, you know that this is a group task. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, please do make sure that you get in touch with your partner as soon as possible so that you can uh, make preparations towards uh, doing that. And then, you know, equally, if there's troubles getting in touch with your partner, letting me know sooner rather than later so that we can try and get the ball rolling on that. Uh, everyone's got different time commitments everyone's got different other things going on in their lives uh, everyone's got different other subjects that they're studying with competing deadlines and all that sort of stuff so it is really important that you and your partner touch base early to try and have uh, ideally uh, an open conversation about what all those different deadlines and expectations are so that you can work out a plan that that works for both of you so um yeah I, I very much do strongly encourage you to to get in touch with your partner as soon as possible if you haven't already uh when you do sit down with with your partner uh, and work out how the hell are you going to do this assignment um some things that you might like to think about and and I've prepared a bit of a a, a general guide to writing a constitutional law blog that I'll share now and I'll post up under that assessment to um uh in under the assessment to link um tomorrow morning when I upload this tutorial uh, but I didn't want to put it up without the associated discussion that that comes along with it so I suppose, and the caveat with this guide is this is in addition to the instructions that are already in your task sheet. I didn't want to repeat what's already in there. So very much making sure that you're following the task sheet first. But broadly, when you th think about a constitutional law blog piece, and some of you might be familiar with the style already, um, it's, it's different from a blog that's like... Um, uh just a um you know people's personal blogs where they just sort of share their random thoughts or or um those sorts of things there's a bit more uh academic rigor to it or, or those sorts of things so if you are aware at all of Oz pub law that's a that's probably the key Australian public law blog um that uh, constitutional law falls under the public law umbrella so they often do um constitutional law topics and and i've linked um uh, an example um blog post from theirs and and we'll talk through that as an example today uh, so ospub law is is a good place to sort of generally get a bit of a, a sense of the style of of what you're after 
Um, the conversation as well is it's not uh, it's not restricted to constitutional law or even law at all. Uh, it's it's much more um, broader in its its focus, but it has a similar style in that what you're aiming to do with this blog post is to inform and educate in hopefully an engaging style, right? So it's it's a a bit different from an essay in that what you're aiming to do is is summarize in this instance uh, uh, an important case uh, and explain what's what's the importance, what's the relevance, uh, what's the the impact of it, and so. In terms of um, uh, an essay that you might have some experience writing already, there are some. There's some overlap in terms of there's a, a degree of research skills that goes into writing an essay that is useful for uh, a blog post as well. There's a degree of um, uh, you know analysis and and evaluation in discussion that overlaps both both mediums but where an essay aims as general rule to uh persuade um uh, and, and you know you've, you've got your central hypothesis or your central argument and you're really trying to convince the reader that you know your uh, approach is right or your, your version is right um the blog you still might very much have a perspective that by the end of, of the piece you'd like the reader to share, but the goal is more in terms of um, informing and, and educating and, and trying to do so in a way that is accessible and, and hopefully interesting as well. And so the, the substance of what you're talking about in, in this instance, um, Kruger and the Commonwealth, the case, that's obviously really important. You've got to know the case. You've got to know um, what the decision was. But it's just important that you develop an understanding of why it's important and and why um, it, you know the case is is from almost thirty years ago. Why is it? What relevance does it have to today's society and, and today's understanding of the constitution? So developing some ideas around what's the significance and the relevance um, is, is just as important as actually developing an accurate understanding of, of the topic itself. So what you're aiming to do with, with the blog piece, you want your reader to come away, hopefully having learned something or, or um, being interested in the topic that you're presenting um, and, and, and very much aiming to, to inform in an engaged way. So how do you do that? The key, the key is to really develop uh, a good plan. Uh, and, and that would be the case if this was an individual assessment, but especially given that this is a, a group task, coming up with a plan as a group, uh, as a pair is absolutely essential. It's, it's, You'll need to you you and your partner can decide whether you want to write the whole thing um, in in close conjunction or or whether you want to delegate sections to each other. That's that's up to you. Um, but even if you you agree to delegate and and to go away and and write bits separately, you still need to have a, a clear overall plan that both of you agree on, so that you can make sure that the end product is is cohesive and and follows a clear central or, or logical theme so being able to have a clear plan is is really really important the the starting point of your research should be the case and and we can talk in a minute about how you might locate the the case i've i've specifically haven't uh, given you the case um document because researching cases is, is an important part of your studies. And I'll, I'll take a quick straw poll in the chat in a minute if you need help finding it. Um, but start with the case uh, and then expand your reading from there. So you might find it useful to look at um, what other people have written about uh, the decision 
Um, and, and that might help you summarize your own thinking, get new ideas, get different perspectives, all those sorts of things. In your research, I'd suggest that you should focus on scholarly sources. So things like books and, and journal articles. And it's it's really important that you do try and stick to those sorts of sources as much as possible because um, the, the academic process is one that um, it doesn't always guarantee quality, but certainly takes more steps towards ensuring it than than other processes in that you know what an academic journal article in particular but but books as well um, go through a really rigorous peer review process so um, when when an academic writes a journal article it will go off to two or three other experts in the field who will read it who will um, evaluate it give give feedback and ultimately uh, make a decision about whether it's actually, worthy of, of publication, whether it's good enough. Um, and that whole process helps make sure or take steps towards ensuring that uh, what is being published in these scholarly sources is accurate and and well-researched and um, provides a, a good academic account of, of whatever's going on. You compare that to, uh, you know, a lot of, of internet sources you know, anyone can create a website anyone can write anything they want on their own website um, there's no guarantee that that what gets written on the internet is has that same degree of checking and accuracy and and rigor so you know and and you know i've i've, I've suggested law blogs that um that don't necessarily go through, they go through editing, but they don't go through a peer review process. So I'm not saying you absolutely can't use them and, and they might be a, a good starting point just to get a, a quick summary or a, a quick idea of what's going on. But as much as possible in your research, you should be looking at sort of these reputable scholarly sources. So research is important. Getting a sense of what what the commentary in the field is, what what the different opinions and perspectives uh, in relation to the decision are. Um, that's that's really important to to help give you a sense of um, of what what's gone on or, or what the different opinions are. And if this was an essay, you you would probably take a similar approach. But as important as that research is, it's also really important that you don't lose your own perspectives. Um, at the end of the day, a, a blog is to a degree an, an opinion piece. It's not your goal is to educate and inform, but you also want to come away from reading it with a sense of what the author thinks. Do they think that the decision was... Um, a good one, a fair one. Do they think that there were problems or inconsistencies with the decision? You don't just want, it's not a case note. It's not just a, a dry, hey, Jake, simple. Did you, um, you just froze there for a second. Could you, oh, just, okay, you, thank said, you. you just said come away with the author and you, nothing else. We didn't okay. Else. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, you want to like coming, coming away with a sense of what the author thinks. Um, it's not just uh, a case of, um, it's not a case note. It's it's not just a dry accounting of here's the decision and here's what it was. You we a blog piece should convey your perspective on the decision, whether you you think it was um, a good decision, whether you think that um, there were inconsistencies, whether you think that it was. Um, uh, uh, a reading of of the constitution that um, fits with these broader themes that we're talking about in terms of, of federalism and and other ideas like that. There's got to be some some element of you or, or what you think uh, that that comes through in this in this blog piece. Otherwise, it's just uh, either a case note or a summary of what everyone else has said. Um, 
there's got to be there's got to be something in there that that is special to you otherwise it, it just becomes 50 of the same thing as well so you know it's it's at the end of the day you will have reactions to this you will have your own thoughts and and it's important that you share those the research process makes sure that your thoughts are um well informed but and and you know your 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 reactions should be supported by evidence um but there's got to be something in it that that is reflects your own views and so that's something that you and your partner um should should make sure that you discuss is what what are your reactions to the case what do you think um the the task sheet gives you some questions to help you start that discussion um and so use that as a starting point to sort of frame the core idea that that you want to discuss and and the other thing too in the planning is that it's a broad case there's a lot going on you won't have in 1500 words you won't have the space to talk about all of it so you've got to pick something that you're going to focus on um and so you may as well make it something that that you at least find a bit interesting or, or that aligns at least a little bit with with what you think is is interesting or important so that's that's the broad i suppose directional vision uh, that you're going with in terms of the the blog i've got some discussion around what how you might actually put the blog piece together but i think now is a useful time for me to pause uh, and take any questions or, or give any clarification on on what we've discussed so far so these these broad ideas about what are you what are you trying to achieve with this this assessment or this piece of writing so any, any questions so far Yep. Concerning concerning which particular skills uh, in our future career uh, will this exercise develop? Yeah, that's a great question. So, and I mean, it's it's part of the answer is is very dependent on um, where where your your future career takes you. Uh, obviously, especially in first year, the the majority of of students I would expect would be thinking that they will um, hope to end up in in legal practice um, and you know if, if that's if that's your goal I, I hope that 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 eventuates there's there's a few important skills that a, a blog piece like this uh, helps foster even if you know I mean if you if you were pursuing or interested in pursuing something or more of a of an academic career, this is right up your alley. But even if your if your focus is on um, private practice, let's say, um, there's there's a skill that's one of the things that's really critical to private practice is being able to take these complex legal concepts and ideas uh, and explain them to non experts. So clients, um, other members of the public uh, in a way that's informative and, and understandable to them. And so whether that's through um, uh, in writing or, or verbally, being able to summarize a, a complex idea, like for example, the the key um, the key issues in in a judgment uh, and and convey that in a way that is easy to understand, that in itself is a really important skill and and so that's that's one particular thing that that this assessment is designed to sort of start building the other thing that is probably most important or, or most useful is it's building up your ability to critically evaluate um, a particular decision and so one of the things that more so the task sheet rather than this guide encourages you to think about are, uh, you know, what what do you see as the the uh, strengths or, or limitations, the positives or, or negatives uh, in terms of the 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 decision's impact, and what this 
that's an important skill in itself because you will constantly be evaluating the impact of new decisions as they come through. You'll be constantly evaluating um, the factual scenarios of, of client situations that they bring to you. Critical evaluation and analysis is a core skill for uh, anyone engaged in legal practice. And so this is, this is something else that, that this assessment really targets. It's, it's not necessarily in, um, in the mode that, that you would be expecting to, if, if you were in private practice. Um, but a lot of firms themselves do publish, um, blog posts on, on key decisions in their fields as well. Um, but the fundamental skill of, of critical evaluation is, is there and, and very much transferable um, if, if you end up in, in the private practice world. Uh, any other questions? No worries. Um, so let's move on and, and talk about sort of the different elements of the blog piece. And, and your task sheet already gives you a basic structure, but I thought I'd, I'd elaborate with some examples as well. So I've pulled, I've got this, um, this is from OzPub Law. Uh, I've linked it up under the week seven um, tile on Moodle, just as an example. I'd, I'd encourage you to go and have a look. It's, it's I've chosen it because it's uh, on, on the topic of executive power. As an example, it's longer than the blog piece that you'll need to prepare. So don't don't feel like this is exactly what you need to do, but I think it highlights a few of the the key elements and, and things that you'll want to be thinking about quite nicely. So it's it's a broadly it's a useful model, but it's not something that you should um, exactly be aiming to replicate. So the first thing is that you'll need a, a heading, um, and the heading should should quickly summarize what the blog piece is going to be about. Um, and, and hopefully, or ideally have some kind of, of way of engaging an interesting reader, uh, an interested reader. There's got to be something that makes them want to, to read it. Uh, you don't have to resort to clickbait necessarily, but, um, you know, don't, don't just write, um, this is a blog piece about Kruger and the Commonwealth, you know, do a little bit more than that. Uh, also, just include a little byline uh, as this is a, is a group assessment. Uh, just list the names alphabetically. Um, conventionally, um, in in something like this, academics would list uh, would would order the names based on um, who did the most work. But hopefully, you'll be you'll be sharing the work fifty fifty. So just just do the um, do do the names in alphabetical order. Um, in terms of an introduction, and this is something that is probably one of the most significant departures from the more usual essay format that you might be familiar with. Uh, uh, the, the introduction serves a similar, and by introduction, you might not necessarily have a formal introduction, but the first couple of paragraphs serve a similar purpose to an introduction in an essay in that you're giving the reader some really early context for um, why what you're going to be talking about is, is significant and relevant, uh, and also give a sense of what the, the piece is going to be about. So introducing um, the key topic. In this example, it's um, they're talking about the judgment in Wilkie and the Commonwealth. Uh, so really early explaining, here's what the judgment is. Um, it was it was so significant for these reasons, um, and there's a um, there's an enduring importance for the way that we understand executive power um, under the constitution. So it's, it's just giving you a really quick snapshot about what are you going to be talking about and why should the reader care. It doesn't need to be as formally structured or signposted as you'd expect in an essay. So, you know, in, in, in an essay introduction, you would expect to have, you know, this essay will discuss blah. Um, 
the the first section will provide a background overview and the second section will discuss the uh, the decision and the third section will um provide an evaluation of the strengths and weaknesses like you don't have to go into that much detail in terms of of previewing what's to come um but equally don't just dive straight into the background you've got to give some introductory sense of of what's to come from there move into some sort of uh discussion of of the background of of the case uh, again what you're doing here is you're giving the reader context for the decision that will, that will help them understand it you don't just need to limit yourself to the pure facts of the case you can go a bit a bit more broad than that and talk about the wider uh, political and, and societal factors that were at play in the lead up to uh, the the judgment as well, right? So it's it's not just um, what were the facts of the case; it's what were the the forces at play that that got the ball rolling that that made this a significant issue that led to a, a constitutional challenge. So it, it's more than just what were the background facts we also want this this wider context as well and, and that helps the reader understand partly it helps them understand why the decision was reached in the way that it was but it also helps them helps reinforce why this is something that's that's important and has relevance to to them potentially from there talk about the decision itself this is obviously your opportunity to demonstrate your understanding of the case and and it's important that this section is um that you're accurate with with your discussion uh so developing a a a good understanding of of um the decision and, and the case now would probably be a good time for me to pause and can you just quickly in the chat indicate if you're um Okay, I'm frozen. So that's, <laughs> um, okay, I'm back. Was I gone for very long then? It seemed to be a quick, um, from my end at least, uh, just a quick one. Um, I was going to, okay, had I finished talking about the background section and moved on to the decision? Okay, cool. So in terms of the decision, making sure that you've got a really clear um, sense of, of um, what was decided, making sure that that's, uh, you've got an accurate understanding of, of the decision and, and how it was reached. I'm going to pause now and just, if you can quickly indicate in the chat, if you have been able to find uh, a copy of the judgment in Kruger, um, or whether that's something that you'd like um, help or guidance on, because I'm not I'm not going to just give you the case. It's it's important that we're building these these research skills. Um, but equally, um, if if you've had trouble finding it, uh, it's important that I that I help you uh, develop those skills. So can I just get a quick indication in the chat of uh, whether whether you you've happily found the case or, or whether you'd like me to spend a minute to talk about where you can find it. Okay. Um, um, mixed responses. I might just very briefly um, run through it because uh, it's easy to find on Ostly, which is always good. Um, but I do want to run you through um, using the library databases for a reason that I'll discuss. So hopefully, hopefully, if you haven't already, it's coming. Um, you will talk about the different um, library databases that that are available you should you should do it in, in intro to law i think um but the university subscribes to a few different um 
legal databases. Westlaw is one. Uh, LexisNexis is another one. LexisNexis is good, um, but I tend to prefer Westlaw for one very key reason, uh, and that's that it has access to Commonwealth law reports, so the, the CLR. The reason that that's important is that the CLR, the Commonwealth law reports, are the uh, official reports of record for the um, for the high court in this instance, but but for Commonwealth law decisions. Um, what that means is that that's the report that goes back to the judges to read back through and and confirm that everything that they um, have said is 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 accurate. Um, and so wherever possible, you should be using uh, the CLR version rather than some of the other versions that are available. So um, for example, ALR, for example, HCA, which is the the un, unreported square brackets version. Um, so I would I would very much encourage you to um, use the the CLR version where possible. Ninety nine times out of a hundred, it won't make a huge difference, um, but where it where it is relevant is the um the pinpoint citation so the paragraphs of different judgments um don't always line up and so where there's a difference you want to be making sure that you're using the the judgment of record which is the the CLR version so hopefully you've been able to to see and and follow along um as I've been running through the process of finding it you can then um uh, download a, a PDF for, for your own future reference. Um, but that's why I'd, I'd encourage you to use um, Westlaw, which you can access via um, the library search. Um, and then from there, it's it's pretty easy to, you just type the judgment in or, or type the um, uh, the reference, the citation in, uh, and you can, and you can pull up a um, a copy of the judgment pretty easily. So hopefully that's uh, that's nice and clear and, and you can all um, find that one without too much too much hassle. So download a copy of the case. Um, make sure you you familiarize yourself with it and, and that will help you write the your decision section. Um, this is also another good place where doing a bit of extra research and and just confirming your understand can be understanding can be really useful as well. Um, then you'll move into a an evaluative part of the blog, uh, which notionally is is a conclusion, um, but I don't want you to think that it's just a um, a a summary and nothing more there's it really needs to be more than that there needs to be um a discussion of and and your task sheet gives you more detail of of some of the things that you might like to consider in terms of what were the strengths and weaknesses of of the decision or or um what's what's the potential impact um why why is it significant today how does it shape our understanding of current events and, and future directions of, of constitutional law, all that sort of stuff is packaged under a, a concluding section, um, but it should be more than just one single conclusion paragraph. There, it, there needs to be more to it. So this is, this is an example where um, the OzPub Law blog post that I've linked to, all it has is one conclusion paragraph but that's because a lot of that analysis um, and evaluation has come in in sections before. They just label it slightly differently. Um, so don't quite follow the, the OzPub law example in this instance. Make sure that you include 
something a bit beefier in your conclusion. Um, but in terms of actually what is said around uh, providing that evaluation, uh, it still offers a, a useful example of, of the way you might choose to to discuss the particular issues. And, and really, you're still linking back to whatever your uh, uh, reactions or, or um, perspectives on the case are. Um, that's that's an opportunity for you to to really um, bring that to the fore. You know, you say, "Oh, here's here's this thing that was that was um, in the decision. Isn't that interesting? And and doesn't it contrast interestingly to something else?" The conclusion section is is the the point where you can um, really showcase all all of that. So that's that's broadly the blog and, and the blog process. Um, what I thought we could do with this week's tutorial questions is walk through and, and sort of brainstorm uh, a, a blog piece in response to the tutorial question to, to sort of show how some, a lot of those ideas might work in practice. Uh, but before we do that, um, any questions on the, on the more substantive elements of the blog that anyone would like to to clarify no okay that's cool so i'll share this week's tutorial question we'll skip question one for the moment um and um Move on to question two. Um, so question two, should the High Court decisions in Williams and the Commonwealth and Williams number two be regarded as positive or negative developments for Australian federalism? We can use this as a starting point to, to plan um, if we wanted to write a blog piece on on Australian federalism, we can actually use this question as a really useful starting point. Um, and and after we go through this exercise, you might decide that um, following a similar process where you use the the questions that are posed to you in the task sheet under the conclusion section, use that as an idea to to kickstart your brainstorming of the whole thing. So. What we'll do, we're obviously not going to uh, <laughs> write a whole blog piece in the next 20 minutes, but we'll start to gather some initial thoughts and, and go through that planning and, and brainstorming phase um, that, that I've suggested is, is a really important and useful starting point. So I'll throw it over to you guys for your to get some initial thoughts. Um, what were your reactions to the Williams cases? Um, and, and do you think they're positive or, or negative developments for Australian federalism. I thought it had a pretty positive impact on federalism in Australia because it helped really um, clear up, I, look, clarify the role that, uh, sorry, the limits to um, Commonwealth power and certain principles in federalism. Yep. Uh, what else? Anyone did anyone see it as a as a negative development, perhaps? Can you just uh, add the positive thing? Mm -hmm. um, maybe I would uh, include here um, spending public money more responsibly. Okay. Yep. So. Yep. 
And so, yeah. It, in, yeah, go ahead. The, just the increase in public accountability and how the there needed to be there need to be like government actions needed to be supported by the constitutional authority and things like that. Yep. Yeah, those are some some good reactions. Anything else? Did anyone think um, maybe it wasn't a positive, or, or are there are there potential negatives to um, to the the High Court's approach in the Williams cases? on which way you would like us to argue uh, if on the negative side we may invent some arguments what i would like well and and i think i think that's a good question because it also uh ties into to the assessment and the way that you approach the assessment as well i'm i'm not going into the assessment with um, uh, preconceived ideas of exactly what I want you to argue. Um, I want whatever you choose to argue, I want it to uh, have basis in in the decision and and the associated commentary. It, it's not it's not a place for uh, <laughs> completely wild hot takes. Um, but in terms of, um, and I'll and I'll bring it back to this question just because I can be a bit more specific without giving away um, answers to the assessment. But you know, if 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 you if your assessment question was on on the Williams cases, and you chose to argue, um, you know, I think overall we should it should be regarded as a positive thing. I'd be very happy for you to take that position. If you chose to say, look, I think it's on the whole, it's it's actually a pretty negative step, I'd be very happy for you to take that position as well. What I would care more about is the the reasons why you give for um, being positive or negative, the way that you um, present that discussion and, and uh, the way that you go about that analysis is more important to me than... Um, necessarily which side of the fence you come down on either way really good analysis and evaluation is alert to multiple perspectives and so i i would suggest that a good approach is to uh find a way of of seeing both positives and negatives and and that doesn't mean that you sit on the fence you know it's it's still good to to um pick a side or, or reach a conclusion that on the whole, I think, I think the positives outweigh the negatives or vice versa. Um, but being able to identify both sides of the debate is, is really important to, to communicating your, your research and your understanding of the case. So uh, um, in answer to your question, I'm, I'm looking for you because we've got a stack of positives. I'm looking for you to come up with some negatives, uh, even if that means playing um, devil's advocate. Uh, and that, and that doesn't mean that you can't then say, look, there are some negatives, but on the whole, I think the, the positives outweigh it, but um, I'm looking for both sides of the debate. Certainly. In this case, this would be creating unnecessary legislative barriers for spending uh, public money and undermining the efficiency of spending public money. Yeah, absolutely. So thinking about this idea of, look, if if the government identifies that there's a a, a need and and they've got a 
um, a democratic mandate via our system of, of responsible government, then um, then they should be able to to step in and, and take the action that they they think they need to. Yeah, I think that's that's a good one. Um, any other negatives that we can think of? I think um, it's just that the government is trying to, I mean, Commonwealth is trying to create a financial framework legislation in terms of uh, the whole country. Might be there, might be cases where this could be the, the service under the case where the chaplaincy services might be left to the school. That might be the need. So I think that way, just not legislating and whole and all for the whole country, um, but giving some freedoms to schools as well. Okay, so I suppose thinking about um, the the idea that um, that this was this was a program that was designed to um, empower schools to make decisions that were were right individually for them, um, and and the decision in invalidating that scheme. Um, correspondingly disempowers those schools is it is that sort of where you're going with that one yeah that's right yeah exactly yeah, right yeah. that's what I'm doing. so i suppose i think it's just giving a little bit more freedom them to make their own um um, um assessment of their own needs and then just move towards how they want to do it in terms of the um the services they want to provide but not going just following just the framework which the uh, commonwealth has laid down for under the framework or it's called financial framework legislation i'm just reading through the case now so yeah so i think giving them a little bit more uh freedom it would have been much better yeah you. yeah um yeah that's a good one any other anything else I mean the other the other thing that was that was big at the time and that hasn't ended up really bearing out too much um in in later years but at the time the big concern was that it the the decisions threatened a whole lot of other um uh, commonwealth expenditure and and especially after the first williams decision um there was a, a a panic of oh well what about this program what about that program um there was a lot of and and the government then um passing new legislation which was sort of meant to retrospectively fix all those other concerns which was then itself invalidated in, in Williams too there was this there was this concern that it gave a lot of uncertainty to a lot of other Commonwealth programs um so that was um that was sort of seen as as a negative of, of the decision as a whole but in particular in relation to federalism it it was seen as as creating a a degree of uncertainty for the way that state governments went about their business because they thought they would be able to rely on all all this money that they were getting from the Commonwealth government that then suddenly was also thrown into doubt. Um, so that was that was another big concern at the time. It hasn't really eventuated too much, thankfully, I suppose. Uh, but certainly, if 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 we were if we're talking about the negatives, then then that would feature in the list as well. So I think I think we've got a good um, a good sort of list here. And and as I've said, you know, it doesn't have to be. Uh, perfectly balanced you don't have to to present both sides as being absolutely equal uh, you're still more than welcome to to take an opinion that you think on balance it's it's more positive or more negative um, but making sure that there's at least um, both aspects or, or multiple perspectives covered is is useful and important in terms of thinking about how you might go about approaching this as a as a um a blog piece we've identified broadly our answer in the sense of we've come up with some positives and, and we've come up with some negatives the other key thing that we want to do um 
at the at the initial plan is to then come up with some sort of uh, core theme or perspective or idea that um, that can carry us through the 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 piece as a whole. So obviously what exactly what that is will depend on whether you think overall it, it, it was a positive step or or a negative step. Um, but you know if, if anyone wanted to to have a have a go at coming up with with uh, um, uh, what that might be, uh, they're more than more than welcome to to have a go at that and, and, and share if they wanted to. I mean, I mean, why don't why don't I give one as an as an example, and then and then you can you can use that to to leapfrog off with your own ones as well. So one one thing that you might um, you might choose to really focus your discussion on is um, the the idea around let's pick. Um, Let's pick these ideas around increased responsibility and and increased accountability for the way that the um, the Commonwealth government spends spends its money. So you you might start with with the proposition that um, Australian federalism is plagued by an accountability deficit. Um, it's not always clear as you know even as we've seen over the past six or seven weeks in this unit it's not always immediately clear which level of government is responsible for what sometimes they have overlapping responsibilities and and that creates confusion as well australian federalism one of its key problems is that it's hard to know who to hold to account um when when there's a problem uh faced with that particular issue the, the Williams decisions were a really welcome first step in unraveling some of that accountability deficit because it really clarified um, how the Commonwealth Commonwealth government can exercise its executive power in um, spending public money and, and especially entering into um, private contracts and private expenditure. Sorry, everyone. My I don't know what happened there. My Wi-Fi completely went. Um, the let's get the screen back up. So I'll, I'll um, reset. I was I was giving potentially a a line of argument that you could use in the blog piece. Um, and so the starting point that you might think about is Australian federalism uh, has a bit of an accountability gap. It's hard to know exactly which level of government is is responsible for what. And we've seen that in action over the past few weeks already. Um, one of the things that is really positive about the Williams decisions is it, it took a really welcome step towards adding more accountability into um, what what the Commonwealth government can and can't spend its money in, or, or added accountability to the way the co Commonwealth government uses its executive power to spend money. So you might you might take that as your your key positive. Uh, you can mention the other ones as well, but you that would be your key standout um, theme that would you would use to carry through your your analysis and and your discussion and it would frame the way that you um, talk about the the background to the case it would frame the way that you would discuss the decision but what would be really useful about it is you've got this through line that runs throughout the blog piece and and that you keep coming back to this idea that the Williams decisions are, are, are overall they're positive because they're giving this this um, increased accountability for the way that 
the Commonwealth government uses its executive power and, and particularly its executive spending powers. That doesn't mean you you um, you neglect the the negatives. You, you might still say, and in particular, um, the 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 idea that there's this increased accountability creates additional barriers and hurdles uh, and inefficiencies in the system. That seems like a, a uh, the most logical counter argument to this being a positive. So that might be um, a negative that you emphasize as well to to highlight the extent of the debate. Um, but but focusing on um, a, a clear central idea to help um, to help guide your analysis is really useful and really important. And in fact, so the second, I think it's numbered as the first one actually on Moodle, the first blog post that I've linked to. It's not really a blog post. Um, it's on it's on the Parliament House website, but um, it's a it follows a similar um, model to the blog post in that it it talks through what was the background, what was the decision, what are what are the the strengths and limitations, uh, just in a much much longer format than. Um, than what you'll need to. And it the reason it's so much longer is it because it it really tries to go through all the positives and all the negatives. Um, you don't necessarily um, need to do that. And in fact, in the, in the space, you won't be able to do that. So being able to to pick a, a central theme to to guide your your discussion and analysis is going to be really useful and really important. Um, what I've suggested is that, exactly what you pick it's got to be some connection to the task obviously um but beyond that i'm i'm happy for you to pick something that showcases your voice and your um the interpretation that you bring to to the case uh so i'm i'm, I'm happy for you to have flexibility on that front um apologies again for for that dropout the wi-fi just completely um lost it any final questions or or comments about executive power or or about the blog post assessment so jacob just to be clear this is just um 1500 word blog working with your partner to do your teamwork, put the document together and you present it, one person presents it or you both submit it, uh, both submit the same article on um, the Moodle assessment. Yeah, so it'll yeah. be, you'll go, you'll both, you'll both be marked on, on the same work. So you're both submitting the same work. The way that, um, and I mean, I'm, I'm open to, if people have especially strong feelings about the process, please do feel free to email me over the couple of weeks. The way that it's currently set up is that both partners, one partner uploads and the other partner um, approves that they're happy with that that's the document that should have been uploaded. The other way that I can set it up is just that one partner submits it and it automatically submits for both. Um, I'm... I'm more than happy for that to be the process. Uh, and in fact, that's that's the process that I use for other subjects that I teach with group assignments. Um, the reason that I didn't go for that in this instance was as a, as a first year subject, um, I thought it would be useful just to have that, that dual element to the upload process uh, and, and having a, an extra set of eyes just double checking that yep that's the that's the document that we wanted to submit um but equally you know i appreciate that it's it's um it's not the most efficient way of doing it so if if people have very strong opinions that they'd like it to just be a one person submits on behalf of of both um i'm, I'm open to those that input uh, but at the moment, the way that it's set up is is that you both need to approve the the submission. Does 
Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, thanks. And I figure that uh, in the turn it in side of things when it comes up as 100% plagiarised by your partner. Uh, yeah. yeah. Been, <laughs> so. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah, that's not an issue. <laughs> that's all right. So, yeah, so that's, it's just the blog. I'm not missing anything. And it's 10 marks, but 10 marks is obviously 60%. Uh, or am I missing as in worth 60% of your final grade. Yeah. Or is there, am I missing something and I haven't no. read the assessments properly? Yeah. So the, it's only worth, it's, there's 10 marks and it's only worth 10%. And then you've got the, the take home exam at the end of term. That's, oh, that's worth the remaining God. marks. <laughs> Sorry to burst that bubble. Um, yeah. Right. Looking forward to that. Thank you so much. No, that's all good. Uh, and you know, once once we get through this task, there'll be there'll be plenty of discussion to prepare you for that that uh, that exam. Um, but yeah, there is there is more assessment to come. Excellent. I really look forward to that. Not yet. Brilliant. Uh, cool. Any other uh, questions or, or comments before we wrap up this evening? Excellent. Well, as always, you're more than welcome to to get in touch via Moodle or, or Teams or email if you've got other questions uh, and comments. Next week, we look at the the third branch of, of um, authority under the Constitution. We're looking at judicial power. Uh, so that um, rounds out our sort of broad separation of powers theme. Uh, so looking forward to seeing you all for that one. Uh, have a great week, everyone, uh, and good night. Thank you. See you. Thank you.